This frame came into the shop today in a pretty raw shape. It's being brazed together by Nick, who works in the back in assembly. He does his brazing in the garage, and as we say in these parts, he's a pretty tall drink of water. So what we want to do is take this frame and show you a tool called the BTS-1 from Park Tool. Bottom bracket, tap set. What this is gonna do is align and cut and clean the threads down here in the bottom bracket. This is only done once. Well, why was it done at all? The manufacturer did have threads in the shell. When Nick bought it, then he welded it. Heat distorts. Welding gets brass and flux and all sorts of junk in there. These are gonna return it back to goodness. So let's see how these things tap. We have taps that match the thread standard of the bike. There's lots of different ones. French, Swiss, ISO, English, BSA, BSC. Don't worry about that, we're matching right here. In fact, we have a nice thread description printed right here because it gets confusing. The right side of the bike is a left-hand thread. The left side of the bike is a right-hand thread, of course. Well, another day on that, but you better match it with your tabs. So, the skip tooth, see how there's every other tooth there, a big white space, gives the junk some place to go when we're cutting. The taper lets us start them together so we're all square and straight. We are lacking one thing, and that's gonna be oil. We need our cutting fluid, CF1, and we're gonna get Good squirt in here, as well as on the tools. Smoother threads reduce wear on the tool as well. So inside and on the tools, let it drip. It's important to start together. One tap alone, trying to start it, easy to cross thread and damage that important first thread. Together, we're gonna see with the arbor, they both go in together. Ah, it guides each other. So here, the right side turning right. We can feel it catch that first thread. This side is turning left. It is mere images to the back. So here, we're starting to pick a little resistance up. A little more CF1 for good luck. On steel, it's a good tradition, it's a good habit. When you hit resistance to advance, back up a bit and you break the chip. You can actually sometimes hear a little tick. So it's, it's building up an edge in the steel inside. And it's, this is starting to get resistance here. So I'm gonna back up, break the chip. And then continue, advance, Break the chip, advance, break the chip, break the chip, advance, break the chip, advance. A couple of steps forward, half a step back. Advance a little more. What we're gonna do with these is just bury the face of the tap because that tap is gonna act as a guide for facing. So I just need to get that below, just a little below the surface here. Now, this side, it's gonna to need to go in as well. So now that we have buried it, we're gonna do what's called facing. Facing is done with this facer and it's going to skin and trim the edge of this to get it square to the other side. Well, why, why would we want that? Why is that so important? These aren't adjustable per se. This is your typical external cartridge bearing. If this and this are not really square to one another, the spindle is gonna destroy each of them, it's gonna wear out sooner. So we want them very parallel, 
very concentric to each other. That's what facing and tapping are gonna do for us. So let's continue on after you see down inside here. We can see the tap is buried below the face. We don't want the facer ever to hit the tap, but we're gonna skin just a little material off the surface, so that's, that's safe. This is going to be guided to the same axis as our threads. We got our cutting fluid over here. We're gonna start facing, in this case, pressure. So I'm pressure here, pressure here, and I'm gonna start turning and see that we're pulling up some material. I hear cutting, I'm sensing cutting. If I look here, a little bit of material has come up. Let's continue on. What we're looking for is just a clean cut edge all the way around. It is easier to see when the paint is on here, but paint's not the big deal. It's the metal that needs to be square. The paint's actually pretty flat. Now we have that nice chip. Good chippage there. See how that's coming up? Yes, that looks nice, it's coming up. But what we want to see, that's a clean cut, clean cut, clean cut. That's good, this area here, this little area here, not a clean cut. So we've faced all of this, this is actually low. We were gonna have to cut all of this to bring it down to that surface there. But let's ask ourselves, would that small area here cause this to twist as it tightened? I don't think so. Oh, so if we want a beautiful sitting on the fireplace frame that's lovely and faced, we should keep going. If you want a practical one, you're in a hurry, I think you could probably stop pretty soon. Uh, you don't need it 100%. Again, you don't want this to twist. As it goes in, if it's not an even surface, it's going to twist a little bit, but enough clean, flat surface, you're gonna be fine. Let's assume Nick wants this on the mantelpiece at night, sipping his malt whiskey, gazing at his beautiful frame. He's gonna want that fully, fully faced. Fast. There, now we can sit on the mantelpiece. Beautifully faced. So, this side is done. This goes back in. The other side is going to come out. And we're going to repeat. Now we come out, out together. Tools back in and try and keep them even, fairly even. It's that last little bit that you want. We're gonna live on the edge of the dangerous. I'll show you how. Everything's fine. Everything's wonderful right now. Oh, the tool's out. This one's in. It's gonna come out, out, out in that last bit. It could turn. Danger. Very, very danger. Eh, in sort of a mechanic sort of way. So that's why we get the two even. We make sure we feel that click of that first thread because now they come out together. They guide themselves in. They guide themselves out. Togetherness. That's what we want. Clean up some solvent and a rag. Let's get on the inside here and clean that oil out. Clean those chips up. Little inspection. Oh, it looks beautiful in there. We can see on the outside some blobs here, but always remember it's on the inside. That counts.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoy Tech Tuesdays, check out our Repair Help video library, which has detailed guides to a wide variety of common bike maintenance procedures. And of course, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos from Park Tool.